You're watching the Sony Xperia 10 Mark III disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I upload a video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the center needs to be removed. Next, we're going to apply heat to the back plate using a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here's the glass back plate. There are 19 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Now that the screws are removed, we can lift up and remove the top plastic cover. The NFC antenna is located at the center of the plastic cover, and there are some antenna lines which are these light gray color lines drawn on top of the plastic. There's also graphene film which sits over the battery, and the graphene film helps transfer heat. Taking a look at the other side, we can see the graphene film which actually runs underneath the NFC antenna as well. There are two plastic pieces on each side of the motherboard which also have antenna lines drawn on them. We're going to start off by disconnecting the battery cable. Once that's disconnected, we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. There are two coaxial cables which need to be popped off and disconnected. There's also copper tape covering the connector for the front facing camera which needs to be peeled off. Now the front facing camera can be disconnected and removed. Now the main board can be lifted up and removed. These are the two plastic pieces with the antenna lines drawn on them. If you're ever having any reception or connectivity issues, make sure these pieces or any of the pieces with the antenna lines drawn on them are properly secured in place. On the main board, there's the wide, telephoto, and ultra-wide lens. The LED flash is located on top, as well as a secondary microphone above that. There's some graphene film over the shields. On the back, the SIM reader is located over here, and there's copper tape on top of the shields. There's a proximity sensor on top, and a notification LED on the top corner. There's a single Phillips screw holding down a bracket which is covering the connectors for the cameras. Once the screw is removed, the bracket can be lifted up and removed. Which then gives you access to disconnecting the cables for the cameras by just popping them off. Once the copper tape is peeled back, we can see two thermal pads on top of the processor and RAM. Here's a better look with the thermal pads removed. In order to remove the battery, there are two provided pull tabs on the bottom to help you pry it off. Well, those pull tabs are pretty useless. Both of the pull tabs easily rip, so we're gonna have to use some isopropyl alcohol and get some around the edges of the battery and let it sit for about a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry the battery off. Here's a better look at the battery. Now it's time to remove the speaker assembly. The plastic housing of the speaker assembly also has antenna lines drawn on it. Here's the speaker itself, and there's a rubber gasket and mesh filter over the opening. This flex cable over here connects the main board to the subboard, as well as the main board to the screen cable over here. The screen cable can be disconnected by just popping it off. We can disconnect the flex cable on the subboard, and the other two ends of the coaxial cable. Now the subboard can be lifted up and removed. Here's the charger port and the primary microphone is located in the center. Here's a look at the other side. So if you need to replace the screen, you would have to remove the back plate as well as the screws on the speaker assembly and remove the speaker assembly. At that point, you would have access to the screen cable, which you can disconnect. And then you'd heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath. You pry your old screen off, get your new screen, apply new adhesive and reapply your new screen making sure you run the cable through the opening in the midframe, and then you would reassemble your phone. Moving on, the vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner. The flex cable for the volume keys, fingerprint reader, and power buttons located right here. 
And there are four Phillips screws holding it in place. So if you wanted to replace those, you'd have to remove those four Phillips screws and then you'd be able to remove those. The earpiece speaker is located on top and it's held down with adhesive. And the headphone jack is on the top corner and here's the flex cable for it. There's also more graphene film underneath the motherboard on the midframe. Here's a look at the metal plate on the midframe underneath the graphene film. For the repairability score, I give this phone a 7 out of 10. It's not too difficult to remove the back plate, and when it comes to replacing the screen, you don't have to take too many things apart to gain access to the cable for the screen, so that should be pretty simple as well. However, when it comes to removing the battery, the pull tabs are very flimsy and tear easily. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once all the screws are back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in the next video.